My name is Yuichi Hayashi. It's great honor for me to have this opportunity. My presentation title is Electromagnetic Information Security. I will focus on air gap security, especially on hardware level security related to electromagnetic fields. I hope you enjoy this presentation. First, I'd like to introduce the background of this talk. This figure shows thrust model inside information system. This figure shows structure of layers in general information system. In the system, it works through interaction of these layers. Under interaction, each layer trust lower layers. So in this structure, hardware is the root of trust. If hardware security degrades, it can be devastating to system security. So hardware security is important to protect the information system against malicious attackers. Especially, this talk focuses on EM information security, one of the important issues of hardware security. Here, I show you the threat of EM information security. Threat to hardware are roughly classified into three categories. It's emission, interference, modification. By protecting device from these threats, we can improve reliability. Next, I explain each threat. This figure shows a concept diagram of information leakage caused by EM emission. These attacks are called passive attacks. The passive attacks do not open target device and, mod and module. The attackers just observe EM information uh, from the device. So they derive secret information from this leakage. This is overview of EM information leakage from electrical devices. During operation, any electrical device generates and emits radio signal encoding information as a result of, uh, of the electrical switching process in data circuit. Even if the emitted signal is suppressed in accordance with EMC regulation, so intermediate or final result of the device operation can be acquired from such EM emission signal. Next, we focus on information leakage caused by intentional electromagnetic interference. These attacks are called active attacks. Unlike hyperbar electromagnetic environments, these attacks do not completely break the equipment. An attacker can cause a temporary fault in the device and induce information leakage. In this type of attack, attackers first inject transient fault into intermediate data during operations and then obtain a faulty output. And they derive secret information from several faulty outputs. The target of this attack is main, mainly a cryptographic modules. Here, let me show you an example. In this demo, I introduce electromagnetic interference causes transient fault in electrical devices without damaging their operations and hardware. This is injection setups. Here is a cryptographic device. Uncrypt circuit is implemented in FPGA. Probe inject sinusoidal waves into cryptographic device via power cable. This is a control PC. This waveform of transient current from crypto module without injection. 
Now I'm starting to interference for the device. We can observe fluctuation of waveforms. We can also observe faulty output from crypto device. Using this output, we can extract secret information. After stopping injection, the waveform returns to original waveform. So, faulty output doesn't occur. Next, I introduce information leakage due to intentional circuit modification. This threat happens within untrusted supply chains. An attacker intentionally modifies circuit and device during IC manufacturing process and equipment assembly, and intentionally change the operation of circuit and the system. Some circuit modification causes a degradation of immunity and increase in emissions. As a result, these modifications increase the feasibility of passive and active attacks. This kind of attack is called hardware trojans. Hardware trojans consist mainly of three categories as shown in this figure. Physical characteristics show how to implement hardware trojans. The activation characteristics shows how to activate hardware trojan. If an attacker wants to operate a hardware trojan in specific area, for example, it can use the broadcast web locally used in that area as a trigger. The action characteristics represent the behavior of hardware trojan. These behavior can be roughly divided into three categories. Modify functionalities, leak information, and denial of service. Here, I'd like to introduce one example of hardware Trojan from IEEE Spectrum. This example is called Kill Switch. In this example, it is mentioned that the hardware Trojan was activated before the airstrike. The radar function was disabled, and the nuclear air facility was destroyed. This threat may expand not only to military and diplomatic areas, but also to commercial products. Several years ago, the US media report on the possibility of such threat to commercial computer system. This article mentions that these systems were used for cloud system of Amazon and Apple. In addition, such threat may spread as an information system. Here is a list of recent papers published on hardware Trojan research and the number of citations. Both number of publication and citation on the increase, indicating that there has been a lot of interest research on this threat in recent years. This figure shows the number of paper by country. The largest number of submission came from US followed by China. In addition, 
About 100 papers were supported by National Science Foundation in U.S. and about 70 papers were supported by National uh, National Natural Science Foundation of China, uh, indicating that U.S. and China were making effort in hardware tourism related to research, even in terms of research funding. So far, I was a brief explanation on EM information security. Especially today, I will focus on information leakage through emission and combination attacks. First, I'd like to introduce conventional threats of EM information leakage. Before we focus on specific threats, let's look at threat targeting information. There is a lot of information around us. For example, meeting information, source code information, medical information, and stock trading and online banking information, and social information, and so on. This information that is related to our privacy. And, and this information can be directly handled by human. When we understand digital information, we use electronic devices to convert it into information that we can perceive. Most information is displayed on a display and we see it with our eyes. Audio information is output via speakers or headphones, and we listen to it with our ears. In that case, we cannot perceive the encrypted information, so the information encrypted in cyberspace will also be decrypted and output. Therefore, if information is stolen during the phase, when humans are perceiving the information, the attacker may immediately understand it, uh, understand it and the information may be leaked. In this slide, we will consider the path of information leakage during the phase when we are perceiving information. Electronic device used by human to perceive information emit electromagnetic waves as they operate. These electromagnetic waves are emitted against the intention of the user or the device designer. Since these electromagnetic waves cannot be perceived direct, directly by humans, if information contained in these radiated electromagnetic waves, information leakage will occur. Electromagnetic waves emitted from electronic devices can propagate several metals to tens of metals depending on the environment. Therefore, a malicious attacker can receive it to obtain information, which may cause privacy violation. These attacks have been called Tempest. As this document indicates, they have been carried out by the NSA and others. However, this fact has not been revealed for a long time. 
the primary target of tempest attack have been the military and diplomatic sectors. Tempest is difficult to find trace of the attack. However, confidential documents taken out by Edward Snowden. Some documents were related to Tempest. Revealed that embassies of several countries were under its threat. Some of you may already know about Tempest and some of you may be hearing about it for the first time today. What is Tempest? Here are some of the candidates that come up when you search for the keyword Tempest acronym. You can find many more candidates on the internet. However, they are all incorrect. Tempest is a code name, not acronym. The Tempest attack obtains information by observing EM leakage from the equipment. The leakage path can be divided into two main categories. One is radiated emissions, and the other is conducted emissions. This figure shows measurements of radiated and conducted emissions. First, I explain upper side. Electromagnetic field emitted from target into space attenuate with distance. In addition, this propagation process is affected by background noise. After this, electromagnetic wave is then affected by antenna gain, measurement sensitivity, and signal processing gain. All of these factors affected whether or not the information is acquired. The lower figure shows the information acquisition process with conducted emission measurements. Conducted emission propagates through a conductor. So propagation loss is smaller than that of emitted radiated emission. However, it is affected by noise from other devices, and there is an upper limit to the conducted frequency. Therefore, the attack scenario for which information can be obtained by this measurement method are limited. As mentioned in previous slide, information acquisition is determined by various factors. But measurement sensitivity is one of the dominant factors. Traditionally, specialized tempest instruments have been used to achieve high measurement sensitivity. These were one off and expensive instruments. In recent years, however, measuring instruments have become more precise and less expensive and CPU processing and storage capacity has rapidly increased. Therefore, it is now possible to obtain information from EM leakage using general purpose measuring instrument and signal processing technique without using specialized measuring instruments. Under this situation, the threat of tempest which was previously limited to military and diplomatic use only, may expand to commercial products. Here is one attack scenario in which the threat extends to commercial product. When low-cost instruments can be used for attack, attacker can execute attack much easier than in the past. Here, attacker does not have any special knowledge. However, they can execute attack by downloading attack code and buying cheap instrument. Here is a partial list of target devices 
most of the devices that we use to perceive digital information are targeted. Here, the talk uh, will focus on touch screen, such as tablets and smartphones, which have become essential personal information processing device in recent years. I will explain the EM information leakage against these devices with specific examples. Unlike with conventional PCs, the users of tablet PCs usually input data with keyboard displayed on the screen using so-called software keyboards. Such integration of display with input device causes a serious risk of harm when the integrated display is captured by malicious attackers. Both the entered key and the purpose displays on the same screen can be stolen simultaneously by a single display capture. In particular, Software keyboard often enhances the entered, entered, entered key by changing the luminance or visual, uh, visually popping up to support user confirmation. Even if an entered key is changed to an asterisk in the password section, an attacker can obtain keystroke information from the enhan uh, enhanced effect. Such threats are potentially present for many applications that use login or authentication information. Against this threat, we can prevent optical display stealing using a polarization filter. However, when EM emission causes information leakage from tablet PCs, the optical countermeasure doesn't work. This figure shows a block diagram and photos of EM display steering setup in this experiment. The measurement device was implemented by a compact software behind radio. A receiver convert, uh, converts a received signal or to fix intermediate frequency and demodulate the result to detect original information. The detected signal is converted into a digital signal. All the components of setup are stored in an attach case. It is compact and light for easy carrying. In addition, we detected keystroke from the difference among neighbor frame in the reconstructed image sequence. Here, I demonstrated keystroke detection. The input keystroke are detected by image difference between neighbor frames. In this example, input keystrings is R, V, U, M, P. Like this, we can detect keystroke automatically. The right side shows the original screen, and the left side shows the information acquired from the electromagnetic waves. In this way, input information can be obtained in real time from the EM leakage. This figure shows image of some typical scenario in which EM display stealing can be conducted in public spaces. Attacker can perform such EM display stealing from any touch screen devices used near the setup. We usually permit other people to be within a distance of 2 meters in many scenarios. This expansion of application in the major difference the conventional setup. In addition, we can connect the output setup to a smartphone or tablet PC through a remote connection, 
which means attacker can confirm reconstructed images. Here, I can show you demo. Uh, attacker can extract secret information from touchscreen device via EM leakage. In this experiment, an attacker connects his tablet uh, to portable setup. He can steal the display image in real time using his tablet. This is the overview of the portable setup. This is antenna. This is a software-defined radio. This is signal processing PC. This is target tablet. We can observe the EM emanation from this tablet. He's an attacker. His monitor is connected to signal processing PC using remote desktop. He can confirm reconstructed image in real time. The target user input information using software keyboard. The input, signal, uh, input strings is the detected automatically. Also, previous example considered scenario in which an attacker approach a target. An attacker can acquire information at a further distance because laptop and desktop PC consume more power than touchscreen devices. Recent research reports have shown that display information can be acquired from the building at a distance of 80 meters. The information acquired through EM leakage is not limited to display information. Keyboards, which are primary input device, are also included. The lower part of this figure shows the signal inside the cable connecting the keyboard to the PC. And the upper side shows the signal acquired through EM leakage. Although, the target signal and the clock signal are observed mixed, but signal processing can be used to identify the input key. I assume you are familiar with the details. Here is a brief explanation of the mechanism by which electromagnetic information leaks occur. The digital signals in the device Include the driving signal of display are represented as a source signal. According to the signal's peaks and valleys, the spectrum is spread over a wide band. If significant frequency components match the frequency characteristic of antenna constructed by wiring pattern and physical structure of substrate, the EM field is radiated efficiently. Thus, EM radiation is generated through such unintentional antenna is low power consumption device such as tablet PCs. The radiation would make it possible to observe the leakage information at about 2 meters away from the device. I show you the source and the antenna in this experiment. We used a near probe to scan the interior of tablet PC to identify the source of the screen information leakage. As a result, we found that the component where the clearest reconstructed image was measured at the leakage frequency was a flat cable connected to the display. Also, we scanned the surface of tablet to identify the antenna. This figure shows a strong EM field distribution of the leakage frequency on the front surface of the tablet. The wave length of the leakage frequency is almost 45 cm, which corresponds to the length of the screen edge. 
In contrast, on the back side, the distribution of EM field is not concentrated. The results suggest the leakage from the tablet used in the measurement was likely caused by the edge of the front display panel acting as an antenna. Next, I briefly explain countermeasures against EM information leakage from electrical devices. One countermeasure is hiding. In the case of touchscreen devices, when the user makes an input, the color and luminance changes in response to it. The intensity of electromagnetic radiation changes accordingly so that an attacker can acquire the input information. On the other hand, as shown in this figure, keeping the power consumption constant regardless of the display color make it possible to prevent information from being stolen from the user based, user based on change in radiation intensity. Another countermeasure is masking. In this countermeasure technique, the image pattern is generated by random numbers, and the display image is alternately switched on the screen. To the human eye, the noise is averaged out, and only the input image appears to be displayed. However, signals emitted as EM wave are dif difficult to see due to randomly generated image. Other countermeasures include jamming. Overlaying jamming electromagnetic field that was stronger than leaking emanations is another effective countermeasure. This enables countermeasure to be taken using simple low-cost equipment, and it is applicable for mobile use. However, the jamming signal should be chosen very carefully because the effectiveness of blocking if stopping depending depends on strongly on the modulation pattern of the jamming signal. As a countermeasure method developed in electromagnetic compatibility to suppress noise radiated from equipment may also be effective against electromagnetic information leakage. In this slide, limited countermeasure is shown, but there are many countermeasures in EMC field. Here, we will introduce concrete example of EMC countermeasures against information leakage from the tablet. In this leakage, we observe the leakage were mainly radiated from front side of the display. In this example, we focus on EM shield-based countermeasure that can be applied after device assembly. In this time, we used transparent conductive film having mesh-like conductor. Of course, as we selected attenuation frequency using conductive mesh structures, it does not affect communication frequencies. The result of reconstructed image at 50 cm away from the tablet with and without countermeasure. As countermeasure against display stealing, the previous studies have discussed many zone-based countermeasures that decrease the intensity of EM emanation of the background noise floor before those emanations reach attackers. This figure depicts the concept of zone-based countermeasure. Finally, I briefly explain the standard relation regarding EM information security. This security standard is being discussed by ITUT SG5. However, since the release of standard document, the performance of computer and measuring instrument has improved. So, 
assumptions for attacker need to review and content should be updated. So far, I have given specific example of EM information leakage. However, not all devices are target of the threat. Some devices have weak EM emission and potentially leakage free. So these devices have been excluded from this kind of threat in conventional attacks. Finally, I will discuss possible attack on device that are resistant to traditional attacks. I explained the equipment with weak EM emission with out of the conventional attack in previous slide. However, there is a possibility that a combination of intentional electromagnetic interference and hardware torsion can induce information leakage forcibly. Please refer to slide at the beginning of this talk for more information on intentional electromagnetic interference and hardware torsion threats. The specific steps as follows. First, the attacker implements malicious circuit in the equipment and intentional electromagnetic interference to the device with malicious circuits. Then, EM information leakage is caused forcibly. By taking such steps, it is possible that information leakage can be forcibly caused even from leakage-free equipment. I'd like to show the possibility of previous mentioned threat with the example of several devices. Before showing specific threats, let us briefly explain the principle of operation of hardware torsion used in this example. This slide shows the characteristics of hardware torsion in this example. Hardware torsion causes EM leakage forcibly and control leakage timing strengths and distance. Hardware torsion doesn't need special antenna for EM leakage and keeps original shape of target electrical signal. This slide shows primitive of hardware torsion. Hardware torsion consists of MOSFET and wiring. And it leaks information outside the device by installing it in peripheral circuit of IC and attached cables. Next, I explain the behavior of hardware torsion. Here, hardware torsion is installed on a transmission line. In this explanation, we only mention a transmission line. However, the hardware torsion works on the PCB inside the device with the same principle. Next step, intentional electromagnetic interference is performed against the cable with hardware torsion. Disturbance waves are induced on the cable, propagate to hardware torsion, and drive it. Under this situation, hardware torsion modulates the target electrical signal using the induced signal as a carrier frequency. The demodulated signal is re-emitted using the cable as an antenna, and information can be acquired by demodulating it outside the equipment. From here, I will explain 
how to implement hardware Trojan for target and how to obtain information. The circuit of hardware Trojan is as shown in this figure. In this example, the target is a wired, wired keyboard. Using the MOSFET, an AM signal is generated by multiplying the AC signal generated between pin 2 and pin 3 by intentional electromagnetic interference and the communication signal of the keyboard input from P1. The actual hardware Trojan implementation is shown on the right. This hardware Trojan circuit consists of MOSFET of less than one drawer, and it's very small. So it is difficult to find this when covering it. The experimental setup is as shown in this figure. This part is the setup used by the attacker. In this experiment, the radiated frequency is set to the resonance frequency corresponding to keyboard cable length. The same antenna is used for send and receive. And the signal is separated by directional coupler. In this experiment, the distance between the attacker and the target is roughly one meter. But by increasing the input, the attacker can extend the distance. This part shows the setup for validation. To compare the leakage signal and the original key input signal, tap the input signal at the end of keyboard and input it to the oscilloscope. This figure shows the signal transmitted according to the key input. The change in the transmitted signal is observed by input signal. If this signal can be received outside the device, the attacker can know the input information. The experimental results are shown in this slide. The input key is Q. This figure shows the signal transmitted to the communication cable of the keyboard at the time of key input. The second figure shows the signal observed outside the keyboard with intentional electromagnetic interference. The third figure shows the signal observed outside the keyboard without intentional electromagnetic interference. In this way, when hardware torsion is installed on the equipment, information leakage occurs and information can be obtained only with intentional electromagnetic interference. The countermeasure and detection technique discussed in hardware torsion may be effective against such attacks. However, many countermeasures and detection methods require a golden model that does not contain hardware Trojan. So it is necessary to develop a golden model free method in the future. Here is my conclusion. In my talk, I focus on electromagnetic radiation and its threats and countermeasure in air gap security. In addition to electromagnetic waves, Attacks focus on various physical phenomena, such as light, laser, sound, temperature, and so on. Since not all electronic devices are subject to threats, it is important to consider the scenario in which an attack is executed and determine whether countermeasure need to be taken. Furthermore, although today's discussion focus on the hardware level, it is also essential to consider security vertically at the upper layers. Thank you for your kind attention.